Hi, I'm Sasha Chua. This presentation is a quick tour of some of the things we do to run EmacsConf. Since 2019, we've run it as an entirely online conference, and we do as much as organization as possible within Emacs itself. I have three reasons for making this presentation. The first is entirely selfish. I need to figure out all the stuff I built for last year's EmacsConf since it was a bit of a crazy scramble. The second is that I want to show people the process of thinking about a complex project, looking for little things to automate in Emacs, and building things up from small pieces. Maybe I'll get some ideas and start building tools for yourself, too. The third is that if you find any of these little tools interesting, I want to point you to blog posts and source code where you can find out more. That way, you don't need to try to read and understand everything quickly. You can find this presentation and other links in the talk page at emacsconf.org slash 2023 slash talks slash emacsconf. There are a lot of different parts, so I'll try to use this map to help make sense of it all. There is so much information to work with, so it probably doesn't surprise you that we use org mode a lot. Most of the conference coordination happens over email, which I can quickly search with not much. Some of the information is private, like emergency contact numbers. We store the talk information in a private org file. I try to put as much as possible into our public organizer's notebook so that processes and decisions are documented. We need a public website. We use IkiWiki to make the web pages because we can work with plain text files in a Git repository. We also make a few static HTML pages for things where IkiWiki is a little awkward. We post announcements to mailing lists. We also receive submissions in a private mailing list so that a number of people can review them. We have a backstage area for sharing files with volunteers and speakers. We share those files publicly when the talk goes live. And there's all the other stuff that goes into running EmacsConf, like shell scripts and configuration files. First, speakers propose a talk by sending an email. We take the info from that email and store it in org properties so that we can work with it later. Every talk is identified with an ID, but since ID and custom ID have special meanings for org, I use slug as a keyword. Speakers' names go into the name property, and a short version goes into name short so that we can include that in the greeting. If people follow the template closely, we can even automatically fill in the org subtree for their talk. We can use regular expressions to recognize the text and extract the properties. Other properties need to be set by hand. I often mess things up when I retype them. To avoid typos, I have a function that sets a property based in the current region. I bind that to control c control x p. That makes it much easier to set properties that couldn't automatically be recognized. Sometimes it makes sense to dynamically generate a property and then edit it, like with file names. We like to name all the talk files the same way, but sometimes special characters in talk titles or speaker names need a little tweaking. I'll put that in a file prefix property so I can edit it. An org property match can map over all the talk entries that don't have a file prefix defined yet. We can use that file prefix to rename files from Emacs. With that property, we can then rename files using that prefix, some extra text, and the file extension. Sometimes it's easier to work with the data outside Emacs, like when I want to rename files with a shell script. If I export a subset of the data as JSON or JavaScript object notation using JSON and code, then I can extract the data with JQ and use it in shell scripts. Another example of semi-structured information is speaker availability. We have speakers from all over the world, so we try to schedule live Q&A sessions when they're around. That means working with time zones. Completion makes it much easier to set the time zone property without worrying about typos. We can take advantage of the time zone list from the TZC package, which works with Unix time zone definitions. Then we can convert times using Emacs. Using a standard format to encode the availability makes it easier to parse. I can use those availability constraints to report errors when I'm experimenting with a schedule. Now that I have the availability information, I can think about scheduling. When we were planning EmacsConf 2022, the schedule was so full, I wanted to see if we could make it more manageable by splitting it up into two tracks. It was hard to think about times with just a table. I was able to turn the schedule information into an SVG, to convince the other organizers to get on board with this crazy plan. And the nice thing about SVGs is that they can even be clickable on the wiki.
Being able to quickly make SVGs of different schedules also helped me test scheduling ideas and think out loud. I could change the time between talks, the order of the talks, and even what tracks the talks were in. This was helpful when I needed to include some late submissions or availability changes, and I wanted to ask speakers what they thought. They could see the different schedule options themselves. It's really nice to have Emacs list support for working with SVGs. I also love how I can have an Emacs list block in an org mode document that updates an SVG that I can view right there in my text editor. Setting the time zone lets me automatically translate times to the speaker's local time zone when I email them. That's mostly a matter of using format time stream with a time zone. There's a lot of text to work with, which means templates are super handy. There are a number of templating functions for Emacs Lisp, like the built-in tempo.el or slex format form s.el. I end up writing something that works with property lists or plists instead, since we use plists all over the Emacs Conf L library. All it does is replace variable with a value from a property list. I use this mostly because I have a hard time keeping track of which percent %s is which when I use format, and it's hard to get an overall view if I just use concat. The code looks for the properties and replaces them with the values. I just find it a little easier to think about sometimes. Getting all the information is just a matter of going over all the talk entries using org map entries. This builds the talk info by running a bunch of functions. Some functions get the information from the org file. Other functions use the info already collected. This can take a while to do again and again. It's useful to memoize this function when I know I'll be using it a lot, like when I export the organizer's notebook. Memoize caches the recent values. We combine this templating function with the talk information to fill in the conference wiki, since that's a matter of writing templated strings to files. The talk pages are generated once and then left alone for manual editing, while the navigation is regenerated every time we change the details. Here are some examples of how we fill in the conference wiki. We put in the format of the talk, how Q&A works, and what the status is. Once the talk is live, we include the video and the links to the files too. The code is a little bit long, but the important part is that we fill in a plist with the values we calculate, and then we can use emacsconf replace plist in string to put that all together. The schedule is a little more complicated. I wrote an ikiwiki directive so that the markup is more manageable, and the emacs list function uses that. The ikiwiki directive takes all the data and turns it into HTML, so we can use emacs list to iterate over a slightly smaller property list and put them into the format ikiwiki expects. It's nice to be able to navigate between talks without going back to the schedule page each time. This is handled by keeping two extra copies of the list, one with the first talk popped off and one with an extra element added to the beginning. Then we can use the heads of those lists for next and previous links. Links to the next talks are also handy on the collaborative Etherpad document that we use for collecting questions, answers, and notes during each talk. Etherpad has an API, so I can start the pads off with a template before the conference. I don't want to accidentally overwrite a pad that has been manually edited. We can save the timestamp of the last modification and then compare it before overwriting. Templates are also very handy when it comes to email. Sometimes we send emails one at a time, like when we let a speaker know that we've received their proposal. That's mostly a matter of plugging the talk's properties into the right places in the template. Sometimes we send emails to lots of speakers at the same time, like when we send them instructions for uploading their files. Instead of sending one email and BCCing everyone, or sending people multiple emails because they have multiple talks, I like to draft these as individual emails to each speaker or a group of speakers if more than one person is associated with a talk. That gives me an opportunity to personalize it further. Many speakers answer questions live in big blue button web conference rooms. Setting up one room per group of speakers makes it easy to give the speakers the details and associate the recorded video with the talk afterwards. For Emacs Conf 2023, I used Spookfox to control Mozilla Firefox from Emacs so that I could automate creating the rooms and adding the URLs to the talk properties in my org file. Then I can use Mail Merge to send each speaker the check-in instructions for their specific room. Some speakers will take questions by email after the conference instead of attending live, so we send them shorter instructions just in case they want to drop by. After the first rush of questions, we can open it up for other people to join. This is handled by changing the public page 
from one that just refreshes in a loop to one that redirects to the actual web conference room. Just in case, we also generate static copies of those redirects so that we can copy them if needed. That way, I don't have to count on Emacs being able to publish them over TREP. During the conference, I'm often jumping from talk to talk. Instead of going to the org file and then searching for the talk, I've made a little hydra with keyboard shortcuts. One of these shortcuts lets me jump to a talk with completion so that I can just type in part of the talk ID, title, or speaker name. I've also defined some embark actions so that I can act on a talk right from the completion menu. For example, I might want to jump to the wiki page or email the speaker. I can also add notes to a talk while looking at an email, like when a speaker lets me know that their video will be late. Making it easy to add a note turns Emacs into a very basic contact relationship management system, or CRM. The way this works is that we have a function that lists all the email addresses associated with a talk. We can then map that over the list of talks, look up the author of the current email, prompt the user for the talk to add the note to, and add the note. On to captions. We've been doing captions for the last couple of years, and now we have a small army of volunteer captioners. They get early access to the recorded talks and fix up misrecognized words, format keyboard shortcuts to follow Emacs conventions, spell names correctly, and do all sorts of other wonderful things. One of our evil plans with Emacs Conf is to get cool stuff out of people's heads into videos and also make captions so that those videos can be searched. To make that possible, we first need a backstage area where volunteers can get the files. This is just a simple password-protected directory with a static HTML page that lists the talks by status and shows the files related to each talk. As a talk moves through the process, I update its to-do state and republish this index. Talks that are ready to be captioned show up in that section, and volunteers can call dibs on the talk they're interested in. That's all done with a function that formats the information and uses Tramp to save the file directly to the server. You can find more details on our captioning process at emacsconf.org slash captioning. I like using SubEd to edit subtitles within Emacs. Let's talk about actually playing the talks. For EmacsConf 2022, we tried using Emacs timers to run the talks. It turns out that you can't call Tram from a timer when you're already using Tram from another timer at the same time. I thought about just tweaking the schedule so that we always start things at different times, but I figured there's probably a more elegant way to do this. This year, I'm planning to experiment with using cron to start talks in autopilot. The shell scripts will take care of playing the videos, figuring out the appropriate Q&A, and joining the web conference if needed. We just need to format the information and install it as a tracks cron tab. It's useful to be able to switch tracks to manual mode independently, just in case things go haywire. Then we can start everything manually. I can also manually update the talk status, like when the host tells me that it's okay to open up the Q&A. The shell scripts we run from the cron tab can also update the talk status themselves. Then a bunch of things automatically happen based on the talk status changes. This uses org after to do state change hook. We get the talk information and pass it to a list of functions Internet Relay Chat, or IRC, is an easy way for people to join the conversation around Emacs Conf. We announce a talk whenever it changes state. For example, when a talk starts, we post the URLs to the talk webpage and the etherpad for questions. We change the topic as well so anyone can see the current talk's information even if they're a little late. This is easy to do with a little bit of Emacs Lisp because, of course, Emacs has an IRC client. In fact, it has several. It seems like a lot of automation and Emacs Lisp, but really, all of this was just built up little by little. And tinkering with this is fun, you know? It's like always being able to ask, hey, wouldn't it be cool if... and then actually being able to go and do it. Sometimes it feels like Emacs Conf is an excuse for me to play with Emacs. It's pretty amazing what you can do by combining a bunch of pieces, a way to store slightly structured information, a way to get it out again, Templates, tramp for working with remote files and running remote commands, a way to talk to a web browser, a way to work with SVGs, an email client, a chat client. You can smoosh them all together in a way that you couldn't if they were all separate things. The code is in the emacsconf-el repository. It's a bit of a tangle because it's accumulating organically, and I haven't really had the brain space to step back and clean it up. But if you spotted anything interesting in this presentation, you can go check it out and see what you can scavenge. The link in this presentation are available from this talk's webpage 
at emacsconf.org slash 2023 slash talks slash emacsconf. Let's figure out how to make emacsconf even awesomer next year.